Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for the Immortal Thor Issue 2 2023. Yeah, and this is a nice cover here, and it does fit with what's going on, especially Thor fighting Tyrannos uh, around the Statue of Liberty and everything. And this was a really good one, showing kind of Thor's tactical ability of trying to figure out how to deal with Tyrannos and kind of his best case scenario and then kind of moving us forward with what's kind of going on and a cool kind of thing is we then start out again with a thing from the elder Edis of Samund uh, Sigfusson trembles Yggdrasil's ash at standing groans that aged tree and the Jotun is loosed it's like hmm interesting so I hope that we get stuff like that uh, through this run because that's kind of interesting well we start off actually uh, kind of backtracking a little bit and seeing the moment that Odin makes his sacrifice to the World Tree for wisdom. Uh, as we see that the person narrating is knowledge is power, uh, so say the mortals of Midgard in their attempts to navigate the prisons of fear and ignorance they build around themselves. Uh, what then of the Odin knowledge? And then, of course, we see Odin uh, talking to Yggdrasil, uh, offering the sacrifice of his eye in exchange for wisdom. The higher wisdom granted to Odin, father of gods, by Yggdrasil the world ash, in this moment when the stars were young. Yggdrasil, whose roots twine and twist beneath the feet of mortals, whose highest point is the very crown of creation. As Yggdrasil answers in the affirmative of yes, and then starts pulling Odin in. Upon whose boughs hang the ten realms of the gods. This is the lesson. This is the parable. The story always changes, the meaning always remains. There is always a sacrifice, always a cost portion for the winter to end, for spring to come again. Interesting. And I kind of like that understanding of stories always change, but the meaning is kind of an eternal kind of thing going on. It's like, hmm, okay. So how are we going to get the kind of changes and what's going to be happening up here in the Immortal Thor? As we see him kind of blast out of Yggdrasil, which is really... I love the artwork. It just really showcases really well what kind of is happening. It's like, what the hell? Knowledge beyond knowledge and the power beyond power to be passed down like treasure from all father to all son and you seldom and sparingly. You have made your sacrifice, poor son, and in time to come your children will make theirs. Of course, setting up how the passing down of anything like that happens. Like, yeah, children have to like go through and learn their own kind of things and make their own kind of sacrifices. For all power has a price. And I love that we pretty much get immediate understanding of that kind of stuff going on here, as we then shift to Thor fighting Tyrannus. So, and Thor could feel the price of his uh, power now, folly on folly, as he called on his father's magic, now his own, to battle who he, uh, he who called himself the Thor of Utgard. You would strike me with the storm puny micro god. The meager lightnings that you command are nothing to one such as I. For I am Tyrannos, who was god of thunder when the thunder first spoke. Tyrannos. And I just love the completely nutty look that Tyrannos has as he's getting ready to wheel back and says, Who holds the wheel of fate in his hand as he pretty much tries to utilize it to crush and kill Thor. Now granted, Thor is able to dodge in time, but only just barely. Like It's like, goddamn. He speaks the truth. Even the Odin power added to mine, he proves too much for me. And the all power carries its own uh, dread price. And then giving us, of course, the all sleep. And I don't mind him kind of like, this is nice to kind of get people understanding how that kind of works out. Now granted, if you're into Thorn and been reading for a while, you'd be like, oh yeah, the all sleep, utilizing that, that happened. But I like that they still are able to give information like this without it being like overbearing to people that are perhaps new to Thor and just reading this for the first time as he's talking about uh, for to use it is to summon the all sleep already I feel the weariness of ages stealing over my bones uh, slowing my reflexes while well. Bast Tyrannos is as fresh as ever the wheel turns for Midgard Thor but first it must turn for you for the time of small gods is over which that's interesting it's like okay Midgard is to be tested but first, it should be, first, Thor must be tested. It's like, hmm, why should it go in that kind of order? We'll see how that kind of works out. And then, I like this kind of thing that we learned. Now, granted, 
I'm going to talk about this, but then go to, uh, at, when we get to the end, about how the energy kind of suffuses into Thor. And uh, we learn that that's an intentional kind of way for what's going on as they go through a uh, certain kind of, uh, kind of sketches and things that they were trying to do for this. And I'm like, yeah, this comes over very well. Okay, if he's like, I can't defeat him, maybe I can delay him. Uh, no longer Odin's power, it's his Thor power now linked to my wisdom, and if I apply that wisdom, and it's like, I like that, it's like, yes, we need to see how Thor would utilize this power, rather than how Odin would utilize this power. Hear me, Tyrannos, Elder Storm God, thou, uh, thou may be, but I am Thor Skyfather, who is Midgard's own son, and when I tell the sky of Earth to open, open it shall, as we see, kablam, right over here, as it's starting to open and split apart the sky. The lightning split the sky and Tyrannos left. Ha! The god of ants sends a single spark against me and cannot even hit me with that. It's like, um, yeah, you might look happy at the moment, but um, that wasn't his objective. Thor merely smiled, and though he was no trickster god, before you make further jest at my expense, old god, deign to turn your head a little, and behind you is a most fascinating view. Uh, there was yet a hint of mischief in it, for Thor had opened the sky indeed. The yawning void as he opened a portal in the sky to the void. Aye, Mjolnir, uh, Mjolnir has ever been able to break open the door, but doors between worlds. And with my father's power added, it may open a door large enough for even thee. Thus, all that remains now is to send you through it. The gale winds pushed and pulled within and without. As we see Thor ramping up the winds to push him through. And it's like, oh shit! And that's a pretty big thing because this dude is... The Uber God, like the one that Thor would be patented after, and utilizing the power to, in this kind of fashion, to open a doorway and then just push him through to, like, delay him at least a little bit. That's a very good and sound tactic. It's like he will re unleash destruction upon Midgard and the and the Ten Realms. He must be put someplace, at least for me to come to a better understanding of how to deal with him. For the portal that Odinson had conjured led to the farthest shore of eternity itself. Yet even as the vo uh, vacuum of space tore at him, fearsome Tyrannus clung on. You seek to banish me with wind, fool king? More fool than king, then, for I am the wind. And likewise, the all-sleep's grip on Thor grew, uh, grew only tighter. My limits are beyond your ken. Mm. But, uh, as Thor kind of grunts, trying to utilize his power in a far enough kind of advanced way to, like, get him through. Only one storm god must surely fall, and yours are all too apparent. I, as apparent as I wish them to be, to make you drop your guard, blow winds of Midgard as you have never blown before, and sweep this ancient contagion from thy mists. And it's like, ah, he did it just enough to be like, you can't push me, and then he lets his guard down, and that is his folly as he gets thrown into the void. And that is just a really cool page to showcase the stature of Tyrannos, and how he's like, ah, shit, I'm getting thrown into the void. And then we see it close in a kind of cool kind of way. I'm like, yeah. They just talk about that it's sealed and gone, only for a time. Uh, he will hunt for Thor, and he's in no shape for a return bout, and that he's exhausted, but he's got to kind of think of what's going on. Midgard is vastly, has been damaged and injured from this fight that's been going on. And he's like, I've got to kind of balance this. The more the all power I spend, the longer and deeper the all sleep will be, and resisting it only further uh, only extends it further when it comes. And uh, tis a sleep I risk never waking from. For while my Thor force recharges, I will be vulnerable to, as any mortal. Uh, any mortal, a wise man would seek some place of safety. Perhaps Tranos was right then. I am more full than king, but I would be a poor sort of king if I left things as they are. And that is an important kind of distinction for Thor. Um, he understands that he must tactically figure out how to handle and deal with the problem that has occurred. A more powerful god has shown up and says, all of Midgard's time is up and so is yours. But he was able to delay him, and the thing is, I either deal with that, this now, which I have the ability to do, even though it might risk putting me in a worse position later, or I go and... I take the all sleep at a faster kind of clip and lead this, but no, he cleans up his messes. This mortal city was caught in Tyrannos' attack. Even from here, I can see the devastation. How many are dying? How many dead? Tyrannos came here because I was here. He admitted as much. 
For the rest of Midgard, his wheel must turn for me. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Who would I be if I simply flew away from what was wrought in my name? And that is cool. I love seeing the thought bubbles for this. This, this is kind of a weird issue because we do get a lot of talking, but it's mainly in Thor's head, which is fine. So then he does his work, and the use of the all power has already left him spent, and he must use it again very carefully. Alternate it most intricately through the hammer's power over time and space with a prayer to my half-brother Bragi, god of poetry, for a certain poetry is eh, poetry is required for this to work. May god of the storm summon the calm before it? It seems impossible, yet I must try. What other choice do I have? And that that's another impart, uh, important thing about Thor. Uh, some things are, like, impossible, but he at least tries. Odin and Valhalla, be with me now. And we see him rot his work. And many a mortal has died climbing a mountain. Exertion takes its toll uh, at the end of the ascent. Uh, what once seemed little effort can be more than the body can stand. Imagine then climbing your mountain, and at the summit finding a second mountain higher than the first which you must also climb, for lives are at stake, and you cannot rest. Have you faced your mountain upon a mountain yet? If not, I hope it never comes. But if you have, if you face it now, know this. You have the courage of Thor. And that, that's a powerful kind of thing. I, there are some people that kind of do need to hear that, and that's, I totally get that. That's a hard thing to kind of deal with, because sometimes you just keep getting more and more obstacles and everything, and this is an obstacle for Thor, continuing to kind of go with this stuff, and I like saying that you have that courage to deal with that mountain, and that second one to get through and do better. It's like, as we see, the Statue of Liberty is brought back. He has utilized the, uh, well, his all-power, the Thor power, to reverse time. Well, to a certain extent. Odin has blessed me, or Bragi perhaps. It worked, at least partially. The damage is undone. Those trapped by rubble are freed. Those injured may be reached and tended to. But the dead remain dead, and as Tyrannus' target, to stay here is to risk further loss of life. So, he was able to help the injured and the trapped, but was unable to bring the dead back. And I do consider that a victory, even though he couldn't do that. That's a lot to be able to try and do. And he's like, I can't return to Midgard. I'm uh, not Midgard. I can't return to Asgard to slumber in a bed while an elder god lays siege to my people. Tis the job of the king to protect the realm, even sometimes by his absence. And he's right. Sometimes, if you're the target, it is better to go to a certain other kind of place to make sure that you minimize the damage that could happen to your people. However, I do think that if Thor had more time or whatnot, he should have been able to... Uh, request aid from Sif or uh, any others of the Warriors Three uh, to like help him out as well. The Seer King's command, Mjolnir World again, reaching the barriers between one space and another to bring Thor to a place where none but he faced the looming danger. And this is kind of a different kind of one, and we see that he goes to an area of the moon. And the gray area of the moon, built by the Inhumans uh, as their place of refuge, like the blue area on the opposite side, it held a pocket of atmosphere and trace weather for a storm god to mold. But the Inhumans had left the territory behind. There were no people here to be harmed. I, I kind of like that little, I'm like, yay, call out for the Inhumans. And I do like that because, think about that. It has a pocket of atmosphere and trace weather for a storm god to mold. Enough maybe for Thor to deal with some pretty good damage, but maybe on a small enough level that Tyrannus wouldn't be able to do anything. Save for, Thor, uh, save for Thor himself. He's like, all right, this will be a worthy battle arena for the gods. Um, were it not done before it begins, his limbs buckling, the weariness comes upon him. He can't hold it back. He'd be as weak as a babe. And then someone says, Thor, and then to that desolate place came Loki. And then we see a very interesting interaction here as we get the wheel turning and the understanding of kind of what's going on here. Not a full understanding, but we see things changing more for what's kind of going on in this arc. Loki asking if he trusts him. What? Loki, for once, your timing is excellent. Lady Sif saw my plight then? Well, no. But then she's the guardian of the Rainbow Bridge, not the babysitter of the Odin Sun. I fear even the sharpness of thy tongue cannot cut through the fog descending, ar uh, descending around me. Ancient God came seeking my life, a prelude to dark business with Midgard, the why uh, of which I know uh, I know not. I forced him back with the all-power, and now you face the all-sleep. Indeed, and I must stay awake a moment longer and, uh, and instruct thee. 
The task, uh, the first task is to warn the golden realm. Once that is done, I would feel no shame in accepting the protectness of thy sorceries. Thor, you have to answer the question. Will you trust me? And at first, Thor's kind of like, what? Uh, what? Sure, yes. Hmm, when the trickster asks for trust, it often means trouble. This is important, Thor. You must answer, and it must be the right answer. Will you trust me as a loyal subject of Asgard? It's like, that's a call and response kind of thing. It's like, hmm, what is this for? Because this kind of stuff is kind of important, kind of even old tales, uh, such as these kind of songs, the Edises, uh, and kind of like in Shakespeare and whatnot. It's how it kind of works on certain kind of rituals and levels. It's like, ooh, this is interesting. Now, granted, I understand that this wouldn't be really important or even really exciting to certain kind of people, but to me, uh, who's into that kind of stuff, I like seeing this kind of stuff. And he's like, didn't I request your aid? I know we've got scars and everything, but they've healed long ago. Yes, I trust your loyalty. Good, that's good. Will you trust me as your sibling who loves you? Of course, of course I do. We are kin, Loki. I brought you back from death because I missed you. You'll always have a place in my heart. Yes, I trust you as my own blood. One more question, Thor. And of course, rule of three and everything. Loki, I'm about to pass out. And I love that. It's, I just imagine that he's kind of a little bit on edge. It's like, I'm about to pass out here, man. This one is the most important. On this, the future rests. Will you trust me even as your enemy? And he looks seriously. And then we shift. And he's like, what? And then we get the narrator kind of talking to us about this. Thor's blood was ice in his throat. A thousand memories of evil deeds and evil days crashed upon him uh, like a wave, drowning even his weariness. What would this? Uh, what would this open the door to? What would it bring? Uh, what would it cost? Exactly. Whatever this was, he could not permit it. He would not. But Loki said it was important, and in Thor's heart, he had already made his answer. Then he says, "Yes," softly. And it's like, "Yep, yes, Loki. Even as my enemy, I trust you." So be what thou must be, and do what thou must do. As we see green light glowing, it's like, interesting. And it does make sense for Thor. Like, he un... I know it sounds weird to trust your enemy, but to a certain extent, you're, you can sometimes know your enemy better and trust them to do certain kind of things that you really wouldn't trust other people to do. I know that doesn't make much sense, but it'd be like, yes, they are going to do things that will be against your objectives. Try to hurt you, kill you, maim you, or maybe even just stymie you. But I get that of Thor being like, yes, I would trust you even as my enemy. And then we see that Loki has transformed again into a really kind of cool, I like that costume design. It's really kind of interesting. You know, like, Greetings, Thor. It has been a long time, hasn't it? So now we're back to kind of more Loki trickster god, which I'm fine with. I know we were setting up Donald Blake as that kind of thing, and I don't know what's going to be going on with that. I'm, But I'm fine with it being more of a traditional Loki, Thor, uh, Norse kind of tale with what's going on here. As long as we at least pick up that thread, because it's interesting to understand what could potentially go on with Donald Blake. So am I saying that as a negative for this one? Not at this moment. It's like, okay, I understand that there were things that go on from other kind of arcs that sometimes you're just like, I'm not dealing with this, so it could just sit in the background. But I hope we kind of circle back to that at some point. But for now, I'm like, all right, here it is. And then Thor's like, a long time as he grips Mjolnir. And if that time has come again, then so it must go. But I have fought one war today and exhausted myself in fighting it. I do not have the energy for mercy, Loki. So I ask you, as your enemy, as your brother, as your king, do you trust yourself? Is this a wise course? There was Uru and Thor's gaze. But this uh, this was a um, uh, no messy trickster, no ranting villain, no Loki Thor had ever fought before. It's like, ooh, that's interesting. Again, circling back, the story uh, the story always changes. The meaning always remains the same. It's like, ooh, let's see how this works. And I do feel that kind of Uru and Thor's gaze. And then Loki's like, we'll find out. Thor now uh, faced Loki in their aspect as teller of the tales. Yes. And in every tale, there must be an ending. So, it's still saying that he's like a teller of the tales. So, it'll be interesting to see how this works. At, uh, uh, or, uh, that Thor, uh, that Loki is a teller of the tales. So, we'll see how that kind of works out with what goes on with Loki. And I kind of like that ending page with like the green and everything going on. Their staff and all that. And just how they kind of look. So we'll see 
how this kind of works out. And then, of course, we see that we don't have letters at the moment, but they kind of go into aspects of how they kind of dealt with designs, bringing up that they kind of wanted energy to kind of flow through him. Let me see. Not flow through him, but like energy as being like an important kind of bit of Thor and what kind of goes on with that. Let me see here. And connecting more to Kirby's 60 era and what they kind of do with like Utgard Loki and Tyrannos. This was just a really kind of cool thing and I can't wait to see where this kind of hits off next. We get him as though we get Loki as the teller of tales. Well, him, her, uh, kind of a, that kind of fluidity that Loki always kind of has in the Norse kind of mythology. It's, they're the teller of tales, but yet they can just, kind of seem to be more going along the lines of the trickster back to kind of what needs to be done there. And since we have gotten Utgard Thor and we have Utgard Loki in the background, we do need those, we do need their representations here of Thor and Loki to probably do battle with them or do something to kind of change up that kind of wheel and understand that kind of story. So I like this because it had uh, Thor dealing with, this, uh, with the problem and creating a solution that at least works out in the immediate term, the short term, where he was able to trick Tarnas enough to be able to throw him off of Midgard to save Midgard and then figure out kind of a plan of attack later on, even though he is going into the all sleep, and then Loki becoming into more of the form that they need to for this story. So we'll see how that kind of works out. I love the art style. Like, I love how Thor and Loki look in showing our realm and how uh, Tyrannos looks with his kind of shadowy overbearingness that he has on our reality because of he's from an upper kind of one and he's a higher kind of god and I love his kind of just condescension towards Thor and that leads to his undoing as he is thrown across to the furthest edges of eternity and I that is an important thing that I hope Thor understands when he tries to fight Tyrannus later on to make sure that Tyrannus underestimates him and utilize that to his advantage to strike and do what he needs to do because I don't know if this will come down I, I doubt this will come down to a contest of strength particularly but it'll be come down to how Thor is able to outthink outmaneuver and use smarter kind of tactics to take on this elder god and I just I just think it's a very interesting way of going into and utilizing the Norse kind of storytelling format in a different kind of way. I mean, granted, we've seen it before of utilizing Ragnarok and all that to kind of go through these kind of stories, but I'm interested in how this is being executed, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So those are my opinions on the issue. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.